Terminal proficiency, a skill that is needed in order to survive down in the complex, whether it be something basic like listing a zone for resources, or something more advanced like dealing with an uplink or a reactor, knowing your way around a terminal is one of the keys to a successful expedition. And yet, there are many out there who know very little about operating one, and instead rely on fellow prisoners for guidance. As someone who dedicates more of his life than he probably should to helping others learn about GTFO's mechanics on how to improve, I cannot let this tragedy stand. Hello everyone, my name is Professor Scaler, and welcome to my comprehensive guide on terminals in GTFO. There are many different commands that you can use at terminals, so many that it might overwhelm a newer player as they don't know which ones are super important, which ones are less important, which ones you'll use almost every single level, or others that you'll almost never find yourself using. So how about we go over the more important ones first that you'll use in almost every single level, that way you have a good grasp on how it to use them and when to use them efficiently, that way you're not just blindly wandering through a level having no clue what it is that you need to do. The first one on the list being the query command. The query command, simply put, is used to find the location of a specified item or just general information about it depending on exactly what type of item it is that you queried. I've put all these different items into one of three different categories. The first one being important items. This would be things like power cells, key cards, fog turbines, specific terminals, HSUs, or just anything else that you might need in order to progress along with the main objective. For example, let's say you drop down to a level and it tells you that you need to find a specific HSU and go and collect a data sample from it and then go back to extraction. You know the name of the HSU that you need to find since it will almost always tell you the name of it in the top left corner in a type of mission like this, but you have no clue what zone it's located in. Well, you could go to any terminal on the level, type in query, put a space, and then put the name of the item that you're looking for, and it will tell you exactly which zone that item is located in. This can also be useful in levels where you go up to a security door that you need to go through to continue on with the level, but the security door is locked and requires a colored key card to get into. Going up to that door will tell you exactly which key card you need to open it, but again, you don't know where it's located. It might always be in the same zone from run to run, or it might be randomized between one, two, or even three different zones. So a good thing to do is go to any nearby terminal, query that specific key card, and it'll tell you exactly which zone it is that you need to go to, and that way you're not just randomly guessing and wasting time and resources. Speaking of resources, that is the second type of item that you could query. This would include anything like med packs, ammo packs, story fills, and disinfected packs. And by querying a specific resource, not only will it tell you which zone it is located in, it will also tell you the capacity of said resource. So let's say you query a specific med pack and you see that has 40% capacity. That lets you know that it is a two use, for every use is 20% of a resource pack. Or if you query an ammo pack and you see that it has 80% capacity, that lets you know that it is a four use. Resource packs could be anywhere from one use to six use, which yes, that does mean that if it is a six use resource pack, it will be at 120% capacity. I don't know how a resource pack goes above 100% capacity, but I'm not going to complain because anytime I see a 6 use, I rejoice a little bit because I know that I am doing well with all the resources I just got. I am also going to cry and get nervous a little bit though because I just realized that the level is giving me a 6 use resource pack and this game typically doesn't do that too terribly often, which means there's probably a pretty big challenge coming up ahead, so it's sort of a blessing and a curse when you see one of those. And then finally, the third type of thing that you could query would be doors and security doors. Now, this is something that very, very few people in the community do as the information you gain from doing this, you can also get by just going up to the door. But if you're somebody who likes to map out a level before you go that far into it, this can help out quite a bit. Let's say you find the security door that leads you to zone 44. If you go up to it, you can see in the top left corner if it'll give you access to zones like 45, 46, 47, and etc. behind it. Or, let's say maybe it's too far into the level and you haven't gotten there yet, you could just simply query that door using the command, and it will give you the forward navigation info as well as the backward. Forward just simply being what zones are tied to it if you head into said zone, so again if you're heading to zone 44 and the level goes up to 47, you'll see it tell you that it gives you access to 45, 46, 47, assuming they are found behind it. And it will also give you backward information, which just lets you know that if you come back out of that zone into the previous one, which zones you'll have access to, so things like 43, 42, and so forth. 
Again, this isn't really used too terribly often, and I actually don't even use this command myself in this type of situation. But for those of you who love to map out an entire level before you go that far into it, this can help out tremendously as you can do this to even regular doors and figure out exactly how many rooms are in a zone, sort of the general design of these rooms, and you can literally build your own map without even going into it. The only real flaw about the query command being the fact that you need to know the exact name of the item that is you're trying to query. If you try to just simply query a door or query security door, but you don't have the ID number with it, it's not going to work. And in some situations, you might not know the name of the item. For example, let's say you're in a level and you go up to a security door and it tells you that's unpowered and you need to plug a power cell into the nearby generator in order to unlock it. You know that you need a generator and you need a power cell. And why am I tell you the specific ID number of the generator? It's not going to tell you the ID number of a cell. So you're not going to be able to just simply query cell to figure out where it is. So in these situations, we need to use a different command. That way we can then follow up with the query command. And that brings us into the next one I want to go over, which is the list command. The list command can be used to list all of a specific resource or item, either throughout the entire level or in a specific zone, or you could just simply list everything in a specific zone or multiple different zones. And there's many different things you can actually do with the list command, but you just need to know how to take advantage of the parameters, which might sound a little bit confusing, but trust me, this is actually very simple and easy. When you use the list command, you have two parameters you could put in. The first one being the specific item you're looking for. So if you're looking for power cells, or if you're looking for key cards, or you're looking for maybe OSIPs or anything that you might want to grab, like resources, put that in the first category. Just simply make sure you're typing what the item itself is. So if it's Medipacks, don't type Medipacks with an S at the end, type Medipack, because the item itself is known as a Medipack, not Medipacks. If you're looking for an OSIP or a GLP, don't add an S to the end by accident. I see a lot of people do that and this will make nothing appear because nothing is technically called OSIPs. It's OSIP with no S at the end. But you can use this on pretty much anything. Door, terminal, resources, may packs, tool refills, power cells, anything. List whatever the item number is or item name is and that will list everything of that item in the entire level unless if you use the second parameter which is the specific zone. Let's say you want to see how many resources are left in the zone you're in, but you don't want to run to every single box and locker to check. You could do list resources and then zone 52 or whatever the zone number it is that you're currently in. This will tell the terminal that you only want to find resources, so nothing else appears in the list, and you only want the ones inside zone 52 to appear on that list. So anything else in a different zone will not show up. If nothing showed up, that means you made a typo and therefore the command did not work properly, or it means that there is nothing of that specified item still left in the zone that you just checked. And this can be very helpful. If you're going through zone by zone, you want to make sure you don't forget any resources. Before you head to the next zone, hop on a terminal, list the zone of resources you were just in, and if you see nothing appear, you know you didn't forget anything and you can keep moving on. Some things like seafoam grenades, trip mines, glow sticks, and lock melters will not appear on list, so you are not able to use them to try to find those, but most other things will. So again, just remember, when you use the list command, you can either list a specific item and all of them throughout the entire level, or maybe just in a specific zone. Or if you don't want to list a specific item and just a zone itself, you can just list the zone and it will tell you everything in it from doors to boxes, lockers, resources, and everything. Another thing too is this command is not stingy like the query command. You can actually abbreviate this command a pretty fair amount. Instead of typing list resources zone 55 like you see on screen, you can actually do list res, which is short for resources, e underscore 55, and that will still let the game know you only want the resources only in 55. You can abbreviate the zone and the specific thing you're trying to list as much as you want, but just make sure you don't abbreviate it too much down to like one or two letters, because then if you do, it's going to include everything in the game that has that combination of letters. So if you do re, you're going to get resources, and you're going to get reactors, which it could be some extra information that you don't really want. So make sure you don't try to abbreviate it way too much. But now let's say you find yourself in a situation where you know that the zone you're currently in has a key card that you need to continue on with the rest of the level. You know it's there because if you list it, it shows up in your zone. If you query it, it says it's in your zone, but you can't find it. You have no clue where it is. It's a gigantic zone, very dark, very foggy, or whatever the reason is. You don't know where it is. There has to be an easier time to, or an easier way to find it, right? Well, Thankfully there is, and that brings us to our third command, which is the ping command. 
The ping command is used to find the exact location of an item, but just like the query command, you need to know the full name of said item you're trying to ping. You cannot just simply ping key. You need to ping key yellow 297 or whatever the full ID of the item is. That, and you also cannot ping any item anywhere in the level using any terminal. In order to ping an item, you need to have the terminal and the item you're trying to ping in the same location. So if you're in zone 54 on a terminal, you can only ping stuff inside zone 54 with you. You cannot ping anything in zone 55 or anywhere else. If you try to, the game will tell you that the ping is out of range and you either have to use the query command or you need to go into the zone with the item you're trying to ping and find a terminal in that zone and use it instead. Which, while this does not happen very often, and this usually only happens in some of the more difficult levels, and even then it's a rare occurrence there, sometimes you will find yourself in a situation where there is no terminal in the zone you're in. Most levels, there will be at least one or two terminals in every single zone, but there are those rare cases where a terminal will, or a zone will never have a terminal in it, and therefore you'll never be able to ping anything inside of that zone because there's no terminal to use. As for the ping itself, it does a few different things. First of all, when you ping it, it's going to process the command a little bit, and then when it fully goes through, it's going to cause a sound effect to emanate from the item that you just pinged, as well as a little marker. This is going to be sort of that green diamond marker that you typically see whenever you place down like a turret or a power cell or anything else that you could pick up in a level. So it's pretty easy to see where it's located. Sometimes you might not be able to see it before it fades away since it does vanish a few seconds after you ping it, but if that's just the case, just re-ping it again. Keep an eye out for the marker, and when you see it, it might be difficult to see, but underneath it, it will tell you how many meters away from you that ping is located. So if you have a good idea of how many 5, 10, or however many meters you know translates to in-game, you should have a pretty easy time of figuring out where that ping is coming from. That, and the thing is too, on the terminal that you used to ping it, it will specifically tell you which room inside the zone it's in. If it's in room B, C, D, etc. So if it's really far away and the zone is gigantic with a lot of different rooms, you could just hop on the terminal, ping it, see which room it's in, then ping it again, and as the command is processing, hop out of the terminal, but stay near it, and then just look around and you'll be able to see the marker. Because as long as you're still standing near a terminal, even if you're not actively in it, a command that has already been activated will continue to process. So if you're all by yourself, because maybe you're playing solo or your teammates are too far away from you, just do the ping command, hop out of it, look for the, where the ping is, that way you see the general direction, Hop back on the terminal, that way you see exactly which room it's located in, and then you have a much easier time of actually finding the item you're looking for. That or just simply stay on the terminal, keep on pinging it over and over by either putting the command in over and over again, or adding a dash T to the end of it, as this will make it automatically continuously ping over and over again, and then somebody on your team could go and look for it. In order to cancel a continuous ping, you either just have to hit Ctrl and C at the same time, or just simply hop out of the terminal as this will cause it to ping the item one last time, but then it will automatically cancel the auto ping. And by using this command, you should have really no problem whatsoever finding an item inside of a zone that might be plaguing you and your team because it's hidden in some corner where you would never initially think to look. And now that we've gone over the three core main commands I want to talk about, let's go over some other ones that you might not be using every single level, but when you do need to use them, you're definitely going to want to make sure you know how to use them. If you are somebody who loves lore and backstory in video games, these next two commands are going to be your best friends. If you're somebody who does not really care about lore or backstory, at least not when it comes to GTFO stuff, well, these two commands are still important for you, just not quite nearly as important. And these commands would be the logs command and read. Every single terminal in the game will have at least one log on it, and you'll be able to tell because whenever you hop onto the terminal, there will be text at the top of the screen that will tell you how many available logs are on said terminal. If it's one, it's basically zero, because every single terminal will have the one basic default log, which if you've read it once, you never need to read it again. But if you see that number say 2, 3, 4, or anything higher, that tells you that there are logs on it, and these are either going to be email and audio logs for the lore of the game, or it might be something that contains a password you need for later on. Because certain reactor levels, two-person uplink terminal levels, and even password locked terminals that might be in some levels will require you to go to other terminals open up the logs and read specific logs where you'll be able to find letters or words that you're going to need to use in order to continue on with the main objective or whatever objective it is that you're doing. So if you see a number higher than one, type in logs, which will open up all the logs and give you the full name of them, and then type read and then the name of the log and that will open it up. Again, if it's a lore log, you can read the email or listen to the audio, but if it's something that contains a password or part of a password that you might need later for a reactor or uplink or a password lock terminal, 
it will have some text, but in the middle of it, very obviously, you really can't miss it. You're going to see part or all of a four letter word, in which case you're going to want to write that down or tell your teammates or just simply remember it. That way, when you get to the part in the level when you need to use it, you already have it on hand and you can use it then and there. Instead of having to backtrack to whatever point it is to go back to that terminal to regain whatever it was and then go back again. So if you know it's a level where you have to do a react or something, it might pay to pay attention to those terminals. Worst case scenario, you type in logs and then you just waste a little bit of time because you see that all it is is a bunch of email and audio stuff. A good way to differentiate them is email and audio logs will always just be a bunch of random numbers and letters and gibberish. But things for like reactors, uplink terminals and passwords will usually have full words out. Something like key and then a number or uplink codes or reactor verify, something like that. So it's very obvious to tell which one are actual important logs and which ones are the lore logs. So again, make sure you double check, might save you a fair amount of time in the level. And finally, we have these special commands, which are basically just commands that don't follow the rules of anything else. They are not available on every single terminal and every single level, but rather they only appear on specific levels when you have a specific objective type. And they can fall into a few different categories. The first one being backdoor terminal commands. These are probably the simplest and sometimes even the easiest ones to do, because when you're in the level, the game will tell you at some point that you have to go to a specific terminal and put a command into it. And it'll either give you the command right away or it'll give you the command once you walk near said terminal. If you're uncertain what the command is because maybe you have your HUD off or something, you can also just simply type commands into the terminal and it'll make any special commands appear right at the bottom. If the very bottom command is exit though, then that tells you there are no special commands on said terminal. When it comes to backdoor terminal commands, a lot of different things can happen. It really depends on what the command itself is. So I always recommend that you read what the command is, read the description that is next to it, and then also just sort of get an idea of what the level itself is like. You know, if you're in a level with a lot of fog and it's telling you to reset the air ventilation, it might cause the fog levels to go down quite a bit, or maybe it'll cause them to come up. If it says something like redirect power, then maybe you're about to make the level go pitch black darkness, or maybe you can make the lights come on if the level is already pitch black darkness. Many different things that can happen. I would honestly just recommend that you make sure all four teammates are near you when you're about to do it, as some of them require you to do a full team scan. And also just make sure everybody's ready and maybe you set up some defenses just in case it initiates an alarm or something for a little bit of time. And that way your team doesn't get completely caught off guard. If you are not dealing with a backdoor terminal command though, you are either going to be dealing with an uplink terminal or a reactor terminal, which are very similar to each other, although they do have a few differences. Uplink terminals will go over first. Whenever you have a level where it tells you to find a specific terminal or terminals that create an uplink at them, you basically just need to make your way to said terminal, which you can query it to figure out the exact zone it's located in. And then once you go near it, you're going to see a string of numbers appear on your screen. You're going to then want to hop onto the terminal, type in uplink underscore connect, and then that long string of numbers, and this will cause a full team scan to appear. Once you finish a full team scan, it will initiate the uplink. This is basically going to be an alarm door, but you're not going to be doing scans while you defend. Rather, one person is going to be on the terminal and they're going to have to be putting in codes. For them, they are going to see something like X02 or Y09. It's always going to be X, Y, Z, followed by a zero and then a number between one and nine. And this is basically their key. They are then going to want to either hop out of the terminal or read it off to their teammates because anybody who is near the terminal but not on it will see a bunch of keys at the top of their screen, a bunch of fake ones as well as the one real one. And next to every single one of these is going to be a four letter word. You need to find the one that is associated with the correct key and then go back into the terminal and type in uplink underscore verify, then a space and then that word, and doing so well correctly will cause you to move from one stage of the uplink to the next. It will then also tell you how many stages there are total, and once you finish every single stage, you're done. It's basically just rinse and repeat, uplink connect will initiate it, uplink verify is how you move from one stage to the next until you complete every single stage, which will shut off the alarm and you only have to deal with the enemies are still left over. Reactor startups and verify are also pretty much the same thing, although instead of having to just defend against hordes of enemies and doing this all on the terminal, you're basically going to play a tower defense game. You're going to do reactor underscore startup, which will cause a full team scan to appear. And once you finish a full team scan, the reactor will start up. You'll be given a timer. You're going to have to defend against waves of enemies for a minute or two or maybe even three. And then afterwards, you will either be given the code for free or the game will tell you to find a specific terminal that you have to go to, go into the logs and then read said log. This will give you the four letter password. And then you want to come back, go to the reactor terminal, type in reactor underscore verify and then the word, and this will cause you to move from one stage to the next. And again, just like the uplink, you rinse and repeat this until you have finished the entire reactor and no more enemies spawn in. There's also another type of reactor command, which is reactor shutdown, which is a little bit different because in this situation, you type that in, 
Then you just have to wait a little bit, usually the lights will go out on the level, and at the top of your screen you'll get a reactor verify code, you just do reactor verify and then that command, just like you would for a react or a normal reactor. And then after you do that, it's going to cause an alarm to initiate and you're going to have to deal with a few sets of scans while you have enemies coming after you. So quite similar to a reactor startup, although just a little bit different. And this for the most part covers all the special type of commands. It's either going to be again, like I said, a backdoor terminal command, an uplink terminal command, or a reactor terminal command. But in any situation, if you have to deal with this, you know what to do, so you should be good. Okay, so we have gone over a lot of different type of commands that you can use on the terminals, but we're not quite done yet with this guide because there are still some terminal shortcuts that we can use to help you out quite a bit and make your experience with terminals so much more bearable. So we're going to go over a list of different things you can use. The first one being the tab key. Hitting the tab key while you have typed in a few letters of a word or a command will autocomplete pretty much the entire thing. So if you have to do one of those backdoor terminal commands that has a very, very long line of text you have to put in, you can hit tab and in most situations it will autocomplete the entire thing, which could be very helpful in some situations where you need to get that command in really quickly and then hop off the terminal that way you could defend against enemies who are chasing after you. Or let's say that you want to use the query command. You could just simply type in QU, hit uh, tab, and I believe it will finish the whole thing. Then instead of typing in resources, maybe you could just type in RES and then hit tab and it'll finish it and pretty much anything else. If you think you can, you probably can. If you hit tab though and it doesn't fully autocomplete it, then that means it's either something that cannot be autocompleted or it means that there's something too similar to it. Maybe if you type in RE, it doesn't know if you're talking about resources, reactor or whatever, and therefore it will not autocomplete it. But in most other situations, you can use this feature if you want to save yourself from typing in a few extra letters. The second thing that you can use are the up and down arrow keys. Hitting up or down will basically scroll through any commands you have already put into a terminal. So let's say you're pinging a bunch of different resources inside the zone for your teammates and maybe somebody says, hey, could you re-ping that med pack again? Instead of having to retype in that whole command, you could just hit up a few times until you get to that command and then hit enter once more. But the thing is, this is dedicated per person. So if somebody hops onto a terminal and types in a command, hits enter and then walks away and then you hop onto the terminal, you cannot hit up and then have that command that they put in appear for you. This will only work on the commands that you put in and it's only per terminal. So you also can't put a command into one terminal, go to another one, hit the up arrow and then have that same command appear on that terminal. It's per person, per individual terminal. But again, this can help on situations where maybe you're pinging multiple resources over and over again, or in situations where you're doing a reactor verify or a uplink terminal, this can help out a lot. Because the thing is, while a command is being processed in a terminal, you can actually put in more text. The only time that this doesn't work is if you put in the ping command. If you're pinging a resource, you cannot hit the up arrow, you cannot type in anything else, it won't let any of that work. But if you're doing the query command, the list command, a backdoor terminal command, reactor, anything, once you hit enter, even if the command is processing and you don't see any of the letters you or typing in actually appear, they are showing up. So a good way to make uplink terminals especially a lot faster and more efficient is once you type in uplink verify and then the word, as soon as you hit enter, immediately hit the up key, backspace four times to delete the word that you just put in. And that way, once it's done and it tells you the new code to put in, you can just hop out, see what word it is, hop back in, and then just type in that four letter word and hit enter. Then again, rinse and repeat. Hit the up arrow, which will bring up the most recent command you just did, backspace four times, and you don't have to worry about retyping in uplink verify over and over and over again. So make sure you take advantage of the up and down arrows whenever you're doing uplinks or reactors as they help out quite a bit. Another good thing to remember about terminals is that terminals remember what you left in it. So maybe in the instance of a reactor, you put in reactor verify, you put the code in, you hit enter, you up arrow to bring back to the previous command, backspace four times to get rid of the word, and you can leave that in. You can walk away for five, 10, 20 minutes and if you or anybody else comes back to that terminal, that text is still in the terminal. So in that case, you just simply have to type in the next four letter word and hit enter, which can be really helpful in situations where you might only have like two seconds to put that code in. And then finally, for the last major shortcut, I mentioned this already, I believe when I was talking about the list command, but you can abbreviate things when you are using the list command as well as some other things. For example, medipack, you just can simply type in M-E-D. Resources, you could just simply type in R-E-S. 
zone, you can literally just simply type in E underscore. There's a lot of different ways you can abbreviate things and shorten the amount of time you have to spend on a terminal typing. So in those situations, make sure you take advantage. There are going to be some levels where you can take all the time in the world to type in whatever commands you want to. And there are going to be other levels where you need to move really, really quickly as you have hordes of enemies chasing you down. And the last thing you want to do is have to type in super long commands or just listing things when you could just abbreviate it and shorten your time almost by half. Maybe it only saves you two, three or four seconds, but in some situations when you keep piling up those two, three or four seconds you save over and over and over again, you might be saving yourself multiple minutes. So make sure that whether it's some of the first few tips I talked about or some of the last few, you take advantage of these because a lot of these tips can definitely save you in some situations. And now that I've gone over every single terminal shortcut I want to share with you, I've got nothing left. This guide has finally come to its conclusion. Thank you everyone for watching this video all the way to the very end. I've been wanting to make an in-depth terminal guide like this one for quite a while now, but I kept putting it off due to higher priority videos. That and sometimes I just simply forgot that I hadn't made this video quite yet. <laughs> As always, if you have any questions for me, have some of your own tips and advice for terminal usage, or you just have something in general that you want to say, let me know down in the comments. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos from me, and if you want to join the community I'm building, there's a link to my Discord down in the description, as well as some other cool links. Among those links being one that will take you to the official GTFO merch store, which I highly recommend you check out if you're a fellow GTFO enthusiast. At the time of me making this video, I believe that the merch store is currently down under maintenance, so make sure you check back later to see if it's up and running with some sweet new products. I have a feeling that when it does come back online, we'll be seeing some cool new stuff. Until next time, don't be afraid to use those terminals to your advantage. Of all things in the complex, they're the least likely ones to bite back at you. And I'll see you all in the next video.